Teaching is selling is mentorship and selling is mentorship. So teaching and selling and mentorship, they're all the same things. You're trying to convince a mentee to do something. So let's separate out the mentorship and specifically focus on the teaching and the selling where you're sprinkling in mentorship. And that's what CS183S, as for sales, lecture two is all about, is teaching is selling and selling is mentorship, where you can't fail as a salesperson if you're attempting to mentor. When you're starting to sell as an engineer, you have a huge advantage because you can absolutely set aside your need to sell something immediately and just focus on the mentorship and just focus on the teaching. So that's a huge advantage for when you yourself are a, some professionalism here in the living room. <laughs> Setting aside your need to sell something is CS 183S Lecture 2, where you don't have the hard sell, but you're enthusiastically mentoring and not needing to make short-term money. Okay, this is exactly what I mean by incorporating mentorship into the sales process. You initially won't even be in contact with your prospects. They don't want to talk to you. They don't need you and they don't trust you. More on that later. So initially, you're just trying to lob out attempts. And inside of these attempts, inside of these at-bats, inside of these, this effort to try to get in front of even a prospect just for a face-to-face, -face, you're going to have to lob in and pepper and pass them bits and tidbits of mentorship. Uh, something that you're an expert in, and if you're a CS major, your expertise is everywhere. You just need to explain it. You just need to teach it. You just need to boil it down like you're going home for Thanksgiving or Christmas and you're providing IT support to that person, to that set of people that are uh, your legacy, your parents. Oh my gosh, you're a legacy. Is that where that comes from? Legacy software, legacy people? A more specific example of mentorship driving the process is where you are asking pointed and specific mentorship driven questions where you're able to uh, draw, elicit, and motivate your prospect to try to do something innovative that they've heard about that they will then execute via you and your startup or your company. And that's the, the idea to try to get a conversation up and going to, ex to execute and involve your CS major expertise into uh, what they might be paying for. For the last little snippet of uh, mentorship marketing is you actually want to Google this article called how to close a deal over voicemail. Remember, when you leave the Stanford bubble, nobody wants to talk to you. People fake want to talk to you because they think that you're going to be inviting them to speak and guest lecture, which is every executive in Silicon Valley's wet dream is, is guest lecturing at some random engineering class. You're going to have to live in the real world by trying to close a deal or close for an appointment via voicemail. I wrote about these things on how to close a deal via voicemail. If you think executives don't use voicemail, that's real. They're using it. So you're going to need to lob in mentorship and all these crazy awesome tricks inside of using your telephone to do more than how do I even get an executive's cell phone number? Funny you should ask that because inside of CS 183S Lecture 2 is how to Google and phone hack, phone freak to get any executive cell phone number. I wrote about these things with a previous mentee from University of Texas, Lorraine Moore, and she wrote an article called How to Get Any Executive, Get a Pen, How to Get Any Executive Cell Phone Number Using Google Maps. It's like 33 little tidbits on how to hack that up. How to get any executive cell phone using Google Maps.